Hey everybody, T Gunner. Today we're talking with Tyler Morris with MCR. Tyler's from New York, so he's in the epicenter of it all. So it's fun to talk to him. He's always got great stats. He's got really good insight into what's going on. Uh, we're going to talk the hotel industry. We're going to talk the stock market. We're going to talk oil prices. And we'll talk TWA Hotel. Thanks for joining. Tyler, welcome. Thanks for joining me today. Another edition of this crazy T Talks thing we're trying. Uh, you're looking <laughs> healthy. I hope you're staying safe. I hope your family's stay safe. You're, Thanks, telling me you're, you're in New York. You're the epicenter of it all. What's life like? Very quiet here in New York. Uh, oh, although I will say in the past week, uh, activity has been picking up. Uh, I was actually out for a drive last Friday, and I encountered traffic. It's the first time I've seen traffic in about six weeks. So uh, I was thrilled to be stuck in traffic. That's funny. How many people are still in the city and how many have left? Uh, I, I think a lot of people have left Manhattan. Uh, the outer boroughs, Queens, Brooklyn, uh, the Bronx, uh, there's more activity going on. Uh, Manhattan is pretty quiet. Times Square, you could roll a bowling ball through the place and not hit anything. That's insane. Think of that two months ago. Yeah. They're, uh, they're packing up the Javits Center hospital there. Javits is reopening, I think, uh, July 1 uh, for conventions again. Uh, they're sending the ship Comfort uh, back down to Norfolk. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're past the peak. There's no doubt about it. Um, they say that 20 to 25% of people in New York have the antibody. Uh, which is a great thing. Uh, and I think we're going to get to a place where uh, you wear a, a armband uh, if you've had COVID, right? Then people know that you've had it and you're safe. So in some of our restaurants, we'll probably have the servers uh, wear the armband, right? They can't catch uh, the virus now, right? They've already had. Interesting. When, uh, when do you think hotels start opening up you know well, let's back up actually have a remind you have 100 limited service hotels plus the twa amazing project you've got over a billion dollars of investable capital i'm sure sitting on the sidelines uh talk to me about your operations what are you seeing uh so i, I think we're similar to everybody else we have about 35 of the of our 100 hotels are closed right now uh the ones that are open are doing okay uh, the highway hotels are doing pretty well. The extended stay hotels are doing quite well. People want the kitchen. Uh, the city center hotels, uh, there's no business whatsoever. Yeah. Um, group business, there's none. Um, you know, th there's some transient business out there, um, not just COVID related, but um, not a lot. What comes back first? Leisure comes back first. People are dying to get out of their basement and their house. I mean, uh, I will never take a business lunch for granted again, uh, right? Except everybody just wants to go to a business lunch. Everybody wants to go back to the office. Uh, homeschooling the kids uh, is very challenging, uh, right? There, there's too many things going on at the same time in one household. Um, and I think, you know, the workplace is, is actually kind of a respite. Uh, so a lot of people are saying, wow, people are, can now work from home. Uh, is that the new normal? Uh, I don't think so at all. Uh, I heard this after 9-11. People said, oh, people are going to be scared to travel. They're not going to travel anymore. Uh, I don't think that's the case at all. Uh, people want to get out and they want to see their customers. They want to go have drinks with people. They want to have dinner with people. Human beings like socializing. Uh, and I think you're going to see a lot of people get back out there and hit the road. When? Uh, when they feel comfortable. Uh, and I think the antibody test will go a long way toward that if you've already had the virus. Uh, and they say that, you know, 25% of people in New York have had it. Uh, that's a lot. That's a big percentage of the population. Yeah. Uh, those people can uh, get back to it. Uh, so I think you got to feel uh, safe on an airplane. That's why I think the drive to business yeah. 
uh, is the uh, near term beneficiary of this. Uh, people will start flying on airplanes. I mean, you're already seeing the TSA numbers uh, bottomed about two weeks ago. And just over the weekend, uh, I think the number was 200,000 people went through TSA uh, and the bottom was 100,000 people a day. So people are starting to travel again, right? Airfares are cheap. Uh, the middle seat is open. Uh, it's if you have the airport to yourself, uh, right? People should be relishing uh, having the airport to themselves. No lines at the TSA check-in or anything like that, um, right? You think the airlines have to drop rates to get people to fill up ish planes and then people start traveling on airplanes? Uh, yeah, I, I think airfares are quite low right now, yeah. just like hotel rates are quite low. Correct. Uh, it's still a competitive market. And if you're flying from Chicago to New York, there's three carriers or five carriers that make that route. Uh, so they still got to compete with one another. None of the planes are full, but they'll start to fill again. Um, right, it depends on where you have your status. Maybe you get the upgrade. The upgrade is certainly more likely now than it was uh, a year ago. Is uh, holding rate in the hotel space? I mean, we talk about, you know, those STR guys, don't drop rate, don't drop rate. I'm assuming you have to, right? There's going to be a lot of rate drops in the hotel space. Uh, a lot of rate has dropped. Um, although just last week, we went out and raised rates at about five of our hotels. All right. Uh, we decided that we were trading down, that we were going to get the business anyway because it had the residence in flag or it had the Hampton flag. Uh, those are strong brands. Um, so we raised rate by, you know, 10 or 20 bucks a night. Um, but you know, the problem with the hotel business is it's the ultimate in game theory. It's the prisoner's dilemma. Yes. Uh, and there's always a squealer, right? There's always one of our neighbors is always going to be charging 59 bucks. Uh, and they bring down the rate in the whole market. So in a market of anemic rates, people are not really making a decision based on, uh, price. So, you know, hold your rate. Are you doing anything differently at those hotels, interaction with guests? And how are they sure. gonna get the confidence that that room is clean? I mean, uh, we've amped up our cleaning protocols significantly. Um, you know, the, the room is, is getting clean like it's never been cleaned before. Uh, same with the lobby, everything is being wiped down on a regular basis. Uh, we just ordered uh, all of the protective guards uh, for the front desk folks, um, right? So that when people are uh, checking in, you're on the front lines, uh, that there's a clear plexiglass shield between our uh, guest mm -hmm. service agents and the guests. How much is gonna go to the phone to go mobile? Mobile check-in, mobile everything? Uh, I think quite a bit. I mean, we, we were kind of there anyway. This just pushes it uh, over the goal line. Um, I mean, I think pre-COVID, we were 5% mobile check-in. Uh, and then, you know, you get into the open key where you can hold the phone up to the door. Um, you could see that probably going to 20 or 25%. Uh, you know, obviously a massive increase from 5%, but it's still not going to be the majority. Um, right? You got to be a part of the loyalty program. You got to have all the technology right. Uh, and a, a, simply a lot of hotel door locks across America uh, don't have the technology. Yet. Um, I think you're right. Let, let's talk opportunity wise. How, how much opportunity do you think will be out there? And maybe I should ask how much money are people throwing at you to try to go take advantage of that right now? Uh, I mean, we have uh, a good amount of capital uh, to put to work uh, upwards of a billion and we're getting a lot of inbound phone calls that people, uh, people are looking for opportunities. Um, you know, you remember in 2009, uh, everybody was super excited, thought there was gonna be a ton of opportunities, and it didn't really turn out. Uh, I'm afraid that this uh, cycle is gonna be the same thing, uh, largely because there's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines. Uh, so it's a question of can you ride this out? Do you have the cash flow to ride this out? Uh, and if you have a personal guarantee, uh, right, that's probably going to be a catalyst uh, for some sort of rescue financing. Yep. Uh, but a lot of hotels, they can hold out for a long time. Who, who do you think are going to be the winners and the losers in this? 
Uh, I think you're going to see some changes to uh, the, the brand contracts yep. um, and uh, you, you know, the flexibility that we have as owners uh, of the hotel. Uh, this is going to give us the opportunity to push back uh, against the big brands. Um, and I, you know, you're already hearing a lot of conversations uh, of people that want to say, Hey, you can't just keep dropping these new hotels right next to me. Uh, and say that it doesn't impact our hotel. It absolutely does. We know it does. Um, you know, the, the, there's not going to be a lot of new supply yep. uh, in the near future. I think you have a five-year window with very little new supply. So, uh, you know, we're playing offense. Uh, I think it's a good time to be playing offense. And we'll see. Uh, you, you know, remember, too, we're only six weeks into this. You know, it seems like yesterday that it was business as usual. Um, so we'll, we'll see uh, how this plays out. There's a ton of unknowns. Is this a recession or a depression? Uh, how does that impact uh, corporate spend, corporate clients? Uh, there's a lot of action on the technology front from a distribution system standpoint. Uh, you've seen Expedia has gone out and recapitalized. Uh, Booking.com has gone out and recapitalized. Uh, Marriott and Hilton have both furloughed uh, a ton of their workforce. So, you know, I, I think everything's on the table. It is. How, how do you think the brands look when they come out of this? Do they all survive? Well, you know, does, the, does Marriott need to have 30 brands? Uh, probably not. Um, you know, that's been a vehicle to put new product near our existing product uh, and grow their franchise fee stream. Uh, and I think that model's gonna need to be relooked at. Um, you know, the, the swim lanes that the brands talk about, uh, I don't think the, the brand uh, differentiation uh, is worth the dollars that are being uh, put on owners to uh, create those swim lanes. Uh, and I think, you know, there's gonna be an opportunity to push back uh, against some of those initiatives. Where do you think the public markets are trading? I mean, they seem pretty healthy right now. We were all looking for opportunity to buy these stocks at a fraction of the price, and now they all seem to be fairly well traded at the moment. Uh, they, they do seem to be pretty well traded. Uh, and, you know, I, I can't exactly uh, put my finger on why. Uh, I think the stocks are overvalued. Yeah. I think the g broader equity markets are overvalued. Um, you know, and the, the technical reason why is uh, as the fangs become bigger and bigger and bigger as a proportion of the indices, uh, the ETFs are required by their algorithm to keep up with the uh, relative value of the fangs as a percent of the indice. Uh, and that's causing increased buying power. So it, it's a lot of the technical uh, trading characteristics that are pushing the stock markets up. You know, if you see the REITs uh, are not, they're off to a much greater extent uh, than the big indices. Uh, and it's because they don't have that volume of ETFs. Uh, they're generally smaller caps. So they have the same effect, but it's, it's much more muted. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll see if hotels are performing poorly nine months from now, 12 months from now, 18 months from now, uh, I think you're going to see a different uh, stock market valuation metric. Has to, right? Got to, right? Uh, where, where are you looking at the stock market? Where are the opportunities? <laughs> you're an oil speculator? Uh, I'm not an oil speculator. Um, you know, I, I think you're going to see some interesting geopolitics. So uh, President Trump came out this morning and said that he is going to sue China for $160 billion. Hmm. Okay, it's an interesting move. Um, right, you could see uh, saying no importing of oil into the US or only with a huge tariff. Uh, and I think that's going to uh, change the dynamics of the market. I mean, the Permian Basin uh, has you know, fallen off a cliff in terms of its drilling because nobody needs any oil right now. Mm -hmm. Typically, uh, the planet uses 100 million barrels of oil a day. Right now, the planet is using 65 million. 
So every single day, 35 million barrels of oil need to go somewhere, right? The storage is full, right? This is most likely a temporary problem, the 65. Hopefully we'll go back to 85, at which point we don't have the storage problem. That should stabilize the price of oil. But now you put geopolitics in there and it depends on what the Russians do and the Saudis do. I mean, you could see a boom in the Permian Basin uh, because of xenophobic uh, actions, right? President Trump may say, hey, now we got to start drilling in Texas again. Let's get people back to work, uh, right? Who knows? I mean, everything's on the table. All the norms that we were used to before aren't really relevant anymore. Everything, I think we're going to continue to see surprises for the next 12 months. How are your hotels in the Permian Basin doing? Are they empty right now? No, they're doing okay. They're doing okay. They're running 50% occupancy. They're uh, running 100%, right? What's that? They were running 100%, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, oil's been falling off for a little while now. Yeah. Uh, in uh, January, oil was 60 bucks. It started to taper in January and February. People were shutting down some wells. Uh, right now, a lot of our business are people capping wells. Uh, right? So that's the kind of beginning of the end. But maybe they go uncap them a month from now because some new legislation is passed to protect jobs in America. I'm not saying that's a good idea or a bad idea. Uh, I'm not an oil prognosticator and I don't uh, profess to know that much about energy policy. Uh, but I think everything's on the table and I think you're going to see some surprising actions out of this administration uh, and Congress. You know, Mitch McConnell said states should declare bankruptcy. Uh, I don't think that's a very good idea, but you know, who, who would have ever thought that this uh, Senate majority leader would say the states in the United States should declare bankruptcy. That's a crazy statement. Yeah. Is there a way for, what does that look like? Trillion dollars or does that never happen? Uh, no, no, I think we're gonna go to uh, 10 trillion. Uh, this, they're just gonna have to keep, I mean, there's so many areas that they didn't include in the last stimulus package, right. all the states, all the municipalities, uh, the pension plans, a lot of them are upside down for cops, firemen, uh, et cetera. You gotta backstop those. You got to backstop the CMBS market, uh, right, which the Fed is already doing. Uh, I mean, the amount of liquidity that the government needs to uh, inject into the economy is, is simply staggering. I think, what, we're at $3 trillion now? Yeah. Uh, I think on the way to $10. Uh, and I think that cr could create an inflationary environment. Yeah, what uh, does that do to us down the road? Inflation is great for hotels because we reprice every day and we can inflate our way out of the debt. Uh, now, that creates a variety of other problems, uh, a lot of other problems, uh, but, you know, then other people think it's a deflationary environment. We go into a recession slash depression uh, and there aren't that many jobs. So to the extent the government keeps flooding the economy with money uh, and the unemployment insurance is actually more than uh, the prior wages earned, uh, you know, you could see that creating some some significant inflation uh, in the economy. You think they're making the right moves right now? Deal with all that later? Uh, yes, they had to do what they did. Yeah. They did a good job of getting the money out there. Uh, you know, whenever you hand out that size money, there's going to be fraud. There's going to be uh, chicanery, right? And you're seeing that now. Uh, but you can't not do it. Uh, right, we really would have had a problem if you didn't. Yes. Do. So, fascinating. Who? Um, one of the lessons we think we're learning is that the economy and the extended stay market is uh, held up well. Extended stay specifically. You look at the public markets. You see Blackstone, and Starwood taking a bite at ESA. Yeah. Uh, any lessons like that you've learned, and or who else do those big boys go gobble up in this market? Uh, I mean, you know, I, I think it's a time, uh, timely play on their part. You're yeah. seeing it in the near term. Uh, extended stay is outperforming everybody else. Yeah. Highway hotels are outperforming everybody else. The economy segment RevPAR was actually higher two weeks ago than luxury RevPAR. 
uh, the economy rev bar was $14 in the United States and luxury rev bar was $12. Right? You never thought you would have seen that. Yeah. Uh, right, so this is a timing play. Extended stay is gonna do uh, much, much better for the next year. Yeah. Uh, right, will it be much better for the next five years? I think that's why Blackstone and Starwood bought it in the public stock is gives them the ability for liquidity. They can trade in and out of that position. Uh, Starwood owns in-town suites. Blackstone owns Motel 6. They both have a lot of experience playing at the one and two star level uh, and obviously at the five star level as well. I think the luxury is gonna take much longer to come back. Uh, Hawaii resorts are gonna take a long time to come back. I think Vegas will come back relatively quickly. Um, people are gonna drive there from LA. Uh, it's an easy road trip. Again, people dying to get out of their basement. Yeah. Uh, right? And it's a very reasonable uh, leisure trip to go out for a weekend or go out for a couple of days. Um, I think a lot of these conventions and associations uh, are gonna continue to hold their conferences. Uh, they're gonna have lower uh, attendance um, and they're going to have to social distance and create these protocols uh, around how people dine, where people sit in the auditorium and that kind of thing, uh, which is gonna decrease uh, the attendance. But I think people wanna go to these things. People wanna go out. Yeah, NYU is now in November. Yeah. See what that looks like. Yeah, I think, you know, here's hoping by November. Here's hoping. Uh, that we're in a good place. Um, Right, never in the history of the world has so much money been thrown at a medical problem. And all of the time shackles that normally exist don't exist, right? They're fast, the FDA is fast tracking everybody. Um, you know, I'm not an immunologist. Uh, everybody is saying 12 to 18 months for a vaccine. Um, but you, you know, there must be $50 billion being thrown at a cure and a vaccine and antibody tests and everything else and all the shackles are taken off. So, you know, um, here's hoping we get some good news on that front, that somebody comes up with a vaccine. There's a pro very promising one in Oxford uh, that they're doing clinical trials on that they just started this week, um, right? There's some good stuff going on in China and Japan. Uh, there's a bunch of um, virus immunologists in the US that are making progress. Right, so uh, fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. How, what is our- You gotta sport? vaccinate 300 million people. Are, are we gonna have sports before we have a vaccine? Yeah, I think you're gonna have sports uh, with no, nobody in these stands. Yeah. Um, right, you check all the athletes yeah. uh, before you play the game. Uh, the reason for that is the TV revenue. Yeah. Uh, people wanna watch it on TV. They wanna bet on it. And, uh, right, I mean, I read the other day that uh, there's intense betting going on around ping pong matches uh, because people have nothing else to bet on. So, uh, right, I think sports will come back sooner rather than later, um, but it's, it's going to be a slow roll uh, from a um, attendance standpoint, fans. Yeah, I think the betting on the NBA dra dra NFL draft was as high as it's ever been. Yeah, is, right. so, Roger Goodell's basement. His uh, basement. Right. Yeah, sitting with his cardigan. Uh, all right, I think that's good. Uh, I wish you and your family well. Uh, final question might be, how's the TWA hotel uh, hanging in there? It's doing fine. It's doing fine. Uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, we changed the mix of business. Yep. Um, but we are gearing up for what they call New York Advance. Uh, and we want to be on the front lines of that. Uh, it's a great drive to destination uh, to go have a couple of cocktails. Uh, we have a lot of space, so it's very easy to social distance. Um, we have a huge 200,000 square foot lobby. We can put the tables very far apart. Uh, we'll do the temperature checks. Uh, when you enter, right, all the cleaning protocols will be in place. And, you know, I think it'll be a nice place uh, to visit, a little vacation uh, on your leisure trip. Yeah, I'll buy that. It's a great hotel. Amazing job you guys did with it. The stories are incredible behind it. Uh, Tally, you're a true friend. I appreciate the time. Stay safe. Let's get out of this thing sooner Thanks. rather than later. What do you say? Let's do it. Let's do it. Stay okay. safe. Uh, good talking to you.
Thanks, Tyler. Bye.